Julie, where are you and what are you doing? I need you to come home right now. Mom, what all of a sudden? You saw me leave for work, didn't you? You know, I'm still working right now. It just so happens I'm on my lunch break. Stop lying! Huh? I didn't race you that way. I hate lying. So what's this all about all of a sudden? Besides, it's obvious that you didn't race me, right? You only cared for my sister Lisa, and it was my late grandpa and grandma who took care of me. And once they were gone, you made me drop out of high school to get a job. What are you talking about? Enough with excuses! Come home right away! We're having a family meeting immediately! What? Family meeting? About what? It's about your future, and I need to set you straight about some things. Set me straight? No, I don't understand. It doesn't seem urgent. I'll talk to you after work. Huh? Work? What's the deadbeat saying? What? Deadbeat? Me? Why would you say that? Come on, you saw me go to work. You get back within the hour. Got me? No, you answer my question. I'm the one who wants to ask the questions. Just come home. What the hell is going on? I have a shareholders meeting this afternoon. I can't leave on such short notice. What? What is this shareholders meeting? You're a deadbeat. How many times have I told you? I'm not a deadbeat. This is useless. Hey, 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 that's enough. Hey, sis, you stood up the family meeting, didn't you? Lisa, now you. What the hell is wrong with you? I told you guys I'd talk to you after work. If it's not an emergency situation, it's only natural to put work first. Wait until after work. That's all I'm saying. This was an emergency meeting to discuss the lie about your job. Huh? I'm getting more and more confused. I was just sitting at my desk staring at papers. Don't make me laugh. A deadbeat staring at papers? Or are you reading a comic book? Oh, give me a break. Why do you keep calling me a deadbeat? I've been working all my life. I know I'm the outcast of the family, but you never said that until yesterday, did you? So why all of a sudden? I found out this morning you don't actually work there. It's no use hiding it. What? Why? What on earth is going on? Your classmate from junior high school, Jamie. I ran into her at the supermarket. Jamie? Oh, come to think of it, she knew you too. That's when she told me. She said you had just quit your job at the time of the class reunion. She was wondering what you had been up to since then. What? What would make her say that? The last time you had a reunion was about seven years ago, right? I didn't think it had been that long since you had become a deadbeat. No, I started working for another company at that time. How can you say that? A bum who makes only $20,000 a year. Huh? After I heard what Jamie said, I raided your room to find out what was going on with you. What? You went through my room without my permission? You can't do that. And then, what's with that bank book? I looked at the total amount of transfers from just a year ago, and it was only $20,000. In other words, $20,000 a year. That's like being a deadbeat. Aren't you ashamed of yourself? $20,000? Oh, that bank book. I think you misunderstood something, but that $20,000... After the family meeting, it was decided to kick you out of the house. You don't have any complaints since it's the result of the family meeting, right? Huh? What do you mean? I really don't get it. 
My sister has no right to complain since she chose not to attend the family meeting. Of course, right? Huh? I threw all your stuff in the yard. So take it and go away. Get on with it. Wait a minute. The yard? It's raining right now. Not my problem. You're the one who hid the fact that you're a deadbeat. It's so embarrassing. Finally got rid of the lazy freeloader. And now the whole family can breathe easy. You don't seem to be listening to me at all. I don't have to listen to you, do I? Just to be clear, does this mean that mom and dad agree with you? Of course! I told you we had a family meeting. Well, then I want you to promise me one thing. What? After I move out, I want you to stay out of my life. Huh? Of course! What are you talking about? That's my line. If you ever need money in the future, don't ever ask us, deadbeat sister. Hey, Julie, don't use our savings without permission. What do you mean by doing that? Give me back the money. What, Mom? It's like you're accusing me of something I didn't do. What are you talking about? I don't know anything. The living expenses account. We're losing money like crazy. But we're just going about our lives as usual. I can only assume that you with no money are somehow withdrawing it. I don't know the PIN number of your account. I don't have your card. I don't have your bank book. Stop making these weird accusations. Don't lie to me. Be honest with me. Listen, this is stealing, okay? Even if it's family, you don't just go around buying things with other people's money. Now, if you honestly admit it and return all the money you withdrew, I'll forgive you and not make a big deal out of it. This is what happens when you live on $20,000 a year. From now on, get your act together and work hard. No, $20,000 is my monthly income. What? What are you talking about? When Lisa looked at your bank book, she said your annual income was $20,000. That's the big misunderstanding. The bank book Lisa saw was the one I used when I was in high school. You too, mom. How can you believe what Lisa says without even checking? Huh? It's the money from a part-time job I had until I dropped out of high school, and it was deposited into that account. It's not the bank book I'm using now. Huh? The money from your part-time job? What? What? I mean, it's a very old bank book. I left it in the dresser for a long time without updating it. Maybe she found it and thought it was my current bank book and thought it was my current income. I can't think of anything else. You keep talking nonsense like that. I won't allow you to evade responsibility. You know what? Come on, you've got to realize something. Realize what? The one who's been sitting around at home acting all high and mighty is the real deadbeat. Can't you see that? Huh? I think it was a year ago. Dad's company went bankrupt due to the recession. What? Your father's company went bankrupt? Is that true? It seems that Dad has not been able to tell you about it. I couldn't help but find out because the company I'm working for now is in the same line of business as his was. Until dad got a new job, I was secretly putting $3,000 a month into the account for living expenses. $3,000? And so, the company you're working for now, did you say? Yes, I've been working there for seven years. Seven years? But then... You could have at least told me. I told you back then, and I think I've said it many times since then. I told you that I was changing jobs because I was going to take over my boyfriend's father's company. He had his own things he wanted to do. What? Is that how it was? I thought you were aware of that. I mean, 
How much less interested could you be in me if you hadn't noticed for seven years, and now you're treating me like I'm a bum? It makes me sad. I didn't mean to. You mean you're the next president of the company? That's right. By the way, I'm part of the management team now. I'm also paid as an executive, so my monthly income is $20,000 like I said before. What? Monthly income? Ironically, the annual income I earned from my part-time job in high school and my current monthly income are the same number, $20,000. I laughed a little at the unlikely coincidence. It's amazing, isn't it? You are the next president? Really? That's amazing! I'm so proud of you as a mom. Well, it's none of your business anymore, is it? What? None of my business? Why? I've been kicked out of my house for a misunderstanding that I don't understand, and I was never given a chance to correct it. You're really a terrible family. Yeah, well, but... It's because you stood us up at the family meeting. It's not my fault. I told you I couldn't leave because I had a shareholders meeting, and I'd talk about it when I got home from work. I told you that, didn't I? Actually, I'm glad there was no emergency that required me to leave early. Um, um, Julie? What? If that's the case, you can come back home, okay? We're a family, so let's live together. Huh? And so the same $3,000 as before. Huh? You promised you wouldn't bother me anymore, didn't you? How could you forget? What? That's what I told Lisa. I didn't know that. Please, just wait. Sis? Mom told me you're the next company president. Oh, it's too much trouble to explain twice. So just go look at mom's messages. Then it's a different story. Come back. You promised me, Lisa. You wouldn't bother me from now on. Because I didn't know you were the next president. It's not that you didn't know. It's that you didn't listen. Dad, mom, and you, you weren't interested in me at all. It's too bad. That's because... As soon as you found out I was the next company president, you turned around and asked me for money. Have you no shame? I was kicked out of my house. Don't bother me anymore. Uh, well, that's... Well, I've got some work to do. Take care. Oh, wait! How are we going to pay the bills from now on? I don't know. Huh? I was adopted by my fiancé's parents, so I don't know anything about you guys now that we are unrelated. Good luck with your family. Well then. After that, I heard that my parents tried to find out where I worked and barged in. But they mistakenly barged into another company. They said they were the parents of the next president of the company and asked them to produce their daughter. They were sitting in the lobby of the company's headquarters. Of course, the police were called and they were taken away. A video of this commotion was uploaded to social networking sites by someone and it spread and caused a huge firestorm. My parents, now completely famous, became reclusive and went straight into hiding. Well, it was just like them. Next, they were relying on my younger sister who was living a carefree life working only part-time to earn money. So my sister started working in the nightlife industry. She was scammed by a man and got into huge debt. My parents got involved in a pyramid scheme and once again got into trouble with the police. One day, they disappeared from the house and have not been heard from since. It's been a while since I've texted. I need to talk to you, Harvey. Talk? What's this about now? I'm having a hard time making ends meet, so I want you to pay alimony and child support. All of a sudden? It's tough being a single mom and raising a kid. I work my ass off every day. 
I haven't heard from you in four years after the divorce. And now you're asking me for money? I mean, what kid? I haven't heard anything. Don't make up excuses. I found out I was pregnant after I left. We were getting a divorce. I didn't think I had to tell you. Hmm. Hmm? That's cold. You have a child and a loving wife who are going through a hard time. You would usually feel guilty or something. Loving wife? My ex-wife? Well, let me tell you why I'm being so cavalier. I'm infertile. Huh? Wait, wait, wait. I've never heard about infertility. It's true. That's why it's impossible for you to have gotten pregnant with my child. Infertility is something that happens to women who are trying to get pregnant, right? How can you believe that a man is infertile? Oh, I get it. You mean the kind of thing where they ask you why you haven't paid alimony and child support? You shouldn't tell such a blatant lie, right? I don't understand why you're in such denial. You can find a lot of information on male infertility on the internet. It's a big problem, you know. Huh? Wait a minute. I googled and found a lot of stuff. I don't know what it all means, but you say you have it too? In my case, it's called azospermia. Zero sperm count, so it's pretty hard to have kids. I didn't want to believe it, so I went to several hospitals for tests. But they all came back the same. So it's hard to believe that you and I had a child together. You're lying, right? No, I'm not. I actually found out I was pregnant right after we broke up. And I gave birth and I'm raising that child. What else can I say? That it's not my baby. That's just one of the many ways you can explain it. No, 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 no. That can't be true. You know, maybe there's some miracle of astronomical probability between us. Yes, a miracle did happen. So I'm sure it's your baby. Have confidence, okay? You're amazing, you know. You're way too positive. <laughs> I have confidence that I'm more positive than anyone. That's not what I'm talking about. You had an affair with your ex-boyfriend from college, right? You think I don't know that? What are you talking about? Don't say weird things. I already know everything. I knew it, so I kept my mouth shut and divorced you without asking for compensation. Well, you know... When my infertility was confirmed back then, I was so worried about what to tell you. Just when I thought I had to tell you, someone told me they saw you go into a hotel with a guy. Then I gathered evidence, and just as I was thinking about what to do after confirming it, you moved out of the house. I saw the divorce papers on the table, and I just didn't care anymore. I filled them out quickly and took them to the city hall that same day. That's how it happened. Do you have any idea how I was feeling? No. Is this true? Didn't you ever wonder how you got divorced without being asked any questions? Well, you can't feel that with your type of thinking, can you? Oh, don't say that. I thought about it some, but then I started living with him. I didn't think too much about it as long as I could get a divorce. I'm sorry about that. Well, that's what I meant. But I'm still not convinced. Then shall we do a DNA test? If it's confirmed that the child is mine, I'll pay for the child. That's natural, isn't it? But you know, I think your ex-boyfriend, he has three children with his ex-wife, right? Considering that, it's more likely that it is your ex-boyfriend's child than mine. Oh, but, but, but... But what? If that's the case, Harvey, you'll have to live by yourself forever, right? That will be hard. If you want, why don't you raise my child with me? I think that will be the best way. What? What's that? You're on a roll. 
I think raising a child with the love of your life will give you something to live for. I think it's a more positive way to live than being alone for the rest of your life. Well, if it's the child of someone you love, even if they're not related to you, I agree with you. Well then, let's go back to what we were talking about. Let's get back together. That's why I married a single mom I met at work. Huh? So now, I'm raising my beloved's child with my beloved. I'm happy every day. No way! You're married! I am. I am married to the only woman who stood by me through my infertility and divorce, and we're raising a child together. We've even formalized the adoption, and the three of us are living happily together. I don't have a problem with the fact that I'm not related to her. Wait a minute! What about me? Won't you get back together with me? That ex-boyfriend dumped me as soon as he found out I was pregnant. I can't get in touch with him, so you're all I have left. I don't give a shit. I'm not getting back together with the woman who cheated on me and had an affair. <coughs> No matter how many times you call me, I won't answer. Let's get a DNA test at a later date with a witness for both of us. I'll pay for it. So call me when you have a preferred date, time, and place. I won't reply to anything else. Of course, don't call me. Well, goodbye for now. My ex-wife was having a hard time making ends meet after she divorced me. She wanted to get back together with me if possible. The DNA test that was done at a later date came back to deny the parent-child relationship between Sadie's child and me. I knew that from the beginning. My wife, who was present with me during the results report, yelled at Sadie, who still persisted. I know it's hard being a single mom, but right now, all you are is a woman clinging to a man. You are the mother of your child. Please live a life that you can be proud of as the mother of your child. Sadie seemed to be struck by my wife's words, who had been in the same position as her. My wife is reliable and proud. It was also an event that made me feel again how wonderful my wife is. I don't know how Sadie is doing now. When we parted, she said she was sorry and thanked us so I want to believe that she will be okay. Hey, Kelly. I know this is sudden, but I'm going on a business trip this weekend. What? This weekend? So get my luggage and stuff ready, and take me to the airport that day. Make sure you drive your husband safe to the airport for his business trip. I can't, Robert. I told you I'm going back to my parents' house for the weekend. What? Your parents' house? I told you in advance. My father hasn't been well recently. I finally got some time off, and I told you I was going home. So there's no way I can drop you off at the airport this time. Don't be ridiculous. That means your father who's on his way to heaven is more important than your husband? What did you just say? Look, I'm definitely more important than your father. I'm the one who's working hard for you right now. And you are my wife. Put husband first at all times. Take your husband to the airport, even if you have to change the time of the flight. Don't be so selfish. So many people are traveling at this time of the year. And changing the time is absolutely impossible. I heard all of the flight are fully booked. I can't move the flight time. Then cancel the trip. You don't have to visit your father. What are you saying? My mother and father are waiting for me to come home. Well, that's even better. Maybe your father will live longer if you make him wait. What? He could try to live longer to see you until you come home. So, I dare you to cancel this trip home. Your father's life could be longer that way. How dare you? That's what you say to a wife with a sick father? Shut up! Anyway, I'm your priority on the weekend. If you don't like it, 
I'm divorcing you. You're so quick to bring up divorce. At your age, you'd hate to get divorced. You want to cancel the flight as soon as possible. Sorry for bothering your work, Rachel. I'm sorry, but can you help me for this weekend? Help? What happened? I'm pretty sure you were supposed to be working from home this weekend. Can you make a few hours of your time? Your father is going on a business trip, and I have to take him to the airport. But I will be at grandparents. Can't you drive him home for me? Do I really have to? Well, I can make time for it, that's okay. But he can just take an Uber. But he hates Uber. He hates that strangers drive for him. He says if I can't take him, he doesn't want me to go to grandparents. What? He is ridiculous, isn't he? He knows you're going to see grandpa, right? Yeah, I've been begging him for three months. He finally gave me permission. What? No way! And he is messing up your schedule at this very last minute for such a selfish reason? That's enough, mom. You should just stop listening to him. I know it would be dozens of times more trouble than it's worth. Oh well, I'll drive you home then. Mom, don't worry about dad. Just go to grandpa's. Thank you, Rachel. No worries. I'm sorry I'm so busy with work that I can't go to see grandpa with you. Say hi to grandpa and grandma for me. I'm sorry, Robert. I know it's sudden, but I'm going back to my parents' house. I got a call from my mother that my father passed away. What? Your father? I'm so shocked that he passed away so suddenly. I have to prepare for the funeral, and I want to stay with my mother for a while. So I was wondering if I could leave the house for a couple of weeks. Luckily, my office gave me the time off because it's not a busy season. Oh, come on. You can't do that. It's insane to go to your parents so suddenly. It's not. What will I do with the house when you're gone? My food? Laundry? Cleaning? Don't tell me you're going to give it all up. I'm sure you can manage for a couple of weeks. You can eat out or get takeout or whatever. And since Rachel is with you, there is nothing to worry about. What are you saying? You're asking a husband who works hard outside the home to eat trashy meal? And I have my daughter who takes care of me? You're putting your wife's job on our beautiful daughter? Huh? You are my wife and Rachel's mother. You work for the family. You do the housework for the family. That's your job. And to neglect that and go back to your hometown is outrageous. Wait, wait, wait. I just lost my father, okay? I'm not going home for fun. I'm going home for the funeral. And I'm not allowed to do that either? You're my wife now. It's your duty to put us first at all times. Oh my goodness. But what kind of woman are you? You made Rachel pick me up and take me home on that business trip the other day. Don't you feel ashamed as a mother? Which one is ashamed? If you don't want her to drop you off and pick you up, why didn't you just take an Uber? Shut up! You should stay home all the time. The last time you asked me to go to your parents three months in advance, I gave you permission. I will never allow you to go home on such short notice like this. No way! I want to be at my father's funeral. I want to say goodbye to him with my mother. You are saying the dead person is more important than your husband? Then let's get a divorce. I don't need a wife who neglects her husband. Robert. Listen, Kelly. If you go against me and go there, be prepared to get a divorce. I understand you're panicking after your father's death, but reconsider about what's most important to you and whose wife you are. I see. If that's the case, then divorce is fine. What? What's important to me is my father's funeral. I don't care whose wife I am. I'm my father's daughter. So I'm going home. Then do whatever you want. But we are divorcing. 
I don't care if you come home crying later. I'm leaving for the airport now. Bye. I'll explain everything to Rachel. What's this all about, Robert? When I came back, the divorce papers are on the dining table. You can see it, can't you? I put them there where you can see them so that you and I can get divorced. Are you serious? You left your wife's job and went to your parents, and it was only for your father's funeral. That's why I'm divorcing you, as I declared. That's a terrible reason. You want divorce just because I attended my own father's funeral? What's so terrible about it? It's a good enough reason for a divorce. What are you saying? You're my wife. It's your job to take care of me. And you gave up that job and stayed at your parents for two weeks. You deserve a divorce, negligent. Well, after being with you for so many years, I've worked 365 days a year for decades. And now, after only two weeks, you call me negligent. It's too late to cry and apologize now. You're divorced because you ignore my words and skip chores. I'm already divorced. What? I've already filed it, and you got me another one. Thank you for signing it. But since the divorce has already been accepted, this is garbage. So I won't sign it, and I'll pack up my stuff and go home. Hey, wait a minute. What do you mean you're already divorced? When did you file for divorce for me? I just did what you told me to do. You said if I disobeyed you and left, you'd divorce me. That's why I filed it before I fly to my hometown. What the hell? You always threaten divorce if anything happened to us. Sometimes you really did give me the signed divorce papers more than once. I actually kept all of them instead of throwing them away. Did you really? I wanted to throw them out, but I couldn't. I found I had 20 of them. I wonder if I can trade them for something. You've got to be kidding me. What are you doing filing for divorce on your own? I didn't do anything wrong. I was just joking. And you're an idiot for taking it seriously. You're the one who's idiot. Don't think you can tie me up with the threat of divorce forever. You may joke about it, but I've always been seriously hurt. Kelly. But I've tried my best as your wife for so many years. After Rachel was born, I told myself that divorce was not an option for the sake of my daughter. But I guess I got into the habit of holding back. Even when Rachel grew up, I was still letting you control me. I finally made up my mind and feel amazing. What are you talking about? You have to be under my control forever. I'm begging you, just calm down. I'm calm enough. What are you talking about? At my age, a divorce would be a disgrace. And you're crazy enough to divorce me. I'm sorry I was such a jerk about against you going to the funeral. I've been in the middle of a busy season at work, and I was a little grumpy. Nothing will bring me back to you. It's too late. I'm going to pack up my stuff and go back to my hometown. I'll be living at home with my mother from now on. You gotta be joking. I'm kindly allowing you can come back to me. Come back while I'm still generous. What? When did you say I can come back? Did that word ever come up in your previous conversation? And you know it, even if it didn't come up. You've been married to me for years. Can't you see I'm trying to be generous and allow you a selfish divorce? No, I can't. All I know is that you have no heart and you're a terrible husband. You won't even apologize to me. You're trying to cover up everything you've said and done. You're such a terrible human, aren't you? Kelly, are you okay? What's the matter with you? You're like a different person. I'm not a weak wife who just obeys you anymore. I'm divorced from you. And now, I can be who I truly am. Well then, bye. Thank you for everything you have done to me over the years. Wait, wait, wait. I'm going to allow you to get a selfish divorce like this. I won't allow you to go back to your hometown like this. Are you still saying that? 
You really need to think about this. Parents are getting divorced so suddenly. I feel sorry for my daughter Rachel. She goes to work and comes home to find her mom has left. Do you really think you can let your beautiful daughter go through that? I don't feel sorry for me at all. I heard about the divorce beforehand, so I'm fine. So don't use me as a reason for stopping the divorce, Dad. Did you know that? Well, actually heard about it on the day she decided to get divorced. Mom called me and asked about your divorce, so I gave her a push. I think it's a great idea. Wait, 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 wait. Are you really Rachel? What about your work? I got a vacation day, and I'm helping my mom out. I'll have to pack up her stuff and take her to the airport. Don't be stupid. Stop helping your mother. She's abandoning us and going back to her parents' house. What do you care? It's her life. Mom, you have to get away from this idiot husband ASAP. I'm all for divorce and going home. Screw you. How will you and I live without your mother? I don't give a shit about your lonely retired life. I'm going to live with my mom and grandma. What? Rachel, don't tell me you're leaving this house too. Are you going to say you're abandoning your father? That's exactly what I'm saying. My company finally allowed me to work from home completely, so I'm thinking of working remotely from my grandma's house. What the hell? The day mom decided to get a divorce, I talked to my boss about it, and he gave me permission right away. I can't go right away because I have to prepare a lot of things. I'll be at my grandma's in a little while. Oh my god! Hey, Dad, do you know why I continue to live at home? Because your mom takes care of everything. When you came home, she'd feed you, clean your house, do everything for you. Dad, you didn't see anything. I took care of myself. Mom only took care of you. Well, and I stayed home because I was always worried about her. Someday, when she decides to move out on her own. She'll probably need someone to push her along. I thought, I wanted to be there to support her then. So, as your daughter, I'll do my best to support you now, Mom. What did you just say? It sounds like I was always pushing your mother around. That's right, you idiot dad. Idiot dad, you're the worst father. After you and Mom get divorced, you'll be miserable and alone. Just so you know, I'm not going to take care of you in your old age. Don't depend on your only daughter just because your wife left you. Wait, are you seriously saying you won't take care of me in my old age? You're my only daughter. I'm your only father, and you won't even help me in the future. You care more about the people who work for you now than the ones who are on their way to heaven, don't you? When did I say that? I'm going to keep your kind words in my heart. When you need care, I will be at the age I work even harder, so I can't be bothered with someone who is dying soon. Please don't say that. I didn't mean what I said. Please don't abandon me. Goodbye, Dad. I'll give the phone back to Mom now. Wait, Rachel. Robert, once again, thank you for everything over the years. I'll leave the division of property and other detailed procedures to our lawyer. So please don't contact me again. If you need anything, please go to your lawyer. Please listen to me, Kelly. I apologize for everything I've done. I'm sorry for the horrible things I said for your father's funeral. I'm so sorry. So please, please, please come back to me. I can't live without you. I see. But I can live without you. If you'll feel really sorry, you'll respect my opinion, won't you? Well, this is the first time ever you'll respect my opinion. I'm very happy. Well, take care. Hope we both will live long. Thanks to the lawyer, everything has been cleared up nicely. Now I am enjoying my life with my mother and my daughter. At my parents' house, and Robert's life after that. His house is in such a mess. 
At work, rumors about the divorce and his daughter leaving him has spread, and he has eventually lost his position in the company. Especially, he has been treated poorly by the female employees. He recently retired early and has been staying in his messy house. I hear that because of this, the neighbors are beginning to distance themselves from him even more. But that's none of my business. I've been receiving letters of apology sometimes. I ignore them all and shred them and throw them away. You'll have to take care of my four kids for Christmas. Jasmine, that's impossible. I can't. Please, we've been invited to a wedding and it's far. Think of it as helping your brother. Take them. Even so, couldn't you have asked earlier? Christmas is tomorrow. I thought I told you, but I guess I forgot. It happens all the time, doesn't it? No, it doesn't. It's insane asking me on such short notice. I don't care if it's another day or something else, but to ask me to take care of four kids on Christmas? Do you not care about my plans? Are you blaming only me? Isn't it your brother to blame too? Yes, he is. I'm starting to get angry at my brother too. Well, that's that then. If it's a wedding, why don't you bring the kids? If I bring four kids, it would disturb the other guests. You don't have a problem with disturbing me? What? You think it's disturbing to take care of your nieces and nephews? What a cold person! Wow, what a disappointment! For an in-law, I can't believe that someone like you has become a family member. I have plans too. We are supposed to have a party with friends and get together for the first time in a while. You can do that any time. A wedding is a once-in-a-lifetime event. It's completely different. It's up to each person what's important to them. I need you to take care of them. My parents are too far away and your parents are useless. What's with that remark? Anyway, take care of it. Oh, and don't mention it to Harry, okay? My brother is going to the wedding too, right? I can't seem to get through to you, so I'll talk directly to him. It'll be his last trip and I feel sorry for him. What? He has terminal cancer. They say he only has a few months to live. That's a lie. He told me not to tell anyone. If he finds out I told you, he'll be pissed at me. You have to be quiet about it. Don't tell him I told you. Unbelievable. There's nothing you can do to help him now. He wants to live a normal life to the end. That's what he wants. Then I'll check with him. I said no. Because you might be lying. Why are you so insensitive? Can you ask a sick person if he's sick? Yep, I'll just ask him. Don't do it! You will regret it! What kind of threat is that? Henry, you can't just leave your four kids with me and go on a trip. I had plans for Christmas too. What? The kids are at home with their mother. What are you talking about? She called me a few hours ago and asked me to take the kids. When I refused, she left them on my doorstep an hour later. Really? I answered the intercom and there were four kids standing there. Incredible. What is she thinking? It was a friend's wedding, right? You two were invited and she asked if I could take care of the kids while you were there. I don't know anything about that. I knew it was a lie. Are you sick? What are you talking about? So, that's a lie too. She said you're terminally ill and won't survive and she wanted to let you spend the rest of your time normally. What the hell? Your youngest son is crying. 
He said she brought them to my house without explaining anything. I have a small one-room apartment, and I don't know what I can do before the neighbors complain. I'm in Florida. Working? Yes, I was supposed to leave tomorrow. Jasmine says she was going back to her parents' house with the kids, so I thought everything was all right. Oh, God. I'm so sorry. But can't you take care of them just one night? Then I don't have a choice. But how can I stop him from crying? Baby got back. What? Sing the rap song Baby Got Back and Shake Your Butt. He'll stop crying. That's a bit embarrassing. Don't be too sexy, okay? I know. He's my adorable nephew. I would never do that. I'm sorry, but you'll get through this somehow. I won't be able to get a plane tonight. I have no choice but to take care of him. But isn't your wife a little too insane? Leaving four kids behind without any rigors to me? And she even lied to me about you being sick. You're right. I'll call her. Please do so. It looks like they're hungry. I'm going to take them to a nearby restaurant. No allergies or anything? They're fine, thanks. This is gonna cost you. I know. I'll be back first thing in the morning. Thanks again. Jasmine! Don't keep calling me! What a nuisance! Can I say anything about you leaving your kids here without permission? I just moved my plans up from tomorrow. I didn't agree. Your oldest son has a fever. What should I do? Take him to the doctor! What? Why are you acting like it's someone else's problem? It's your kid, right? Aren't you worried at all? Worrying won't bring down the fever. I'm not there, so you'll have to do something about it. I don't even have their insurance info. Oh, sorry. I forgot. I didn't think they'd get a fever. The other three are asleep, and I can't just leave them here. What should I do? I guess you finally understand how I feel. Huh? Being a mother is hard, isn't it? Yes, it is. So what? I'm just saying it wouldn't hurt to help out. Is this the time to be talking like that? Your own child is suffering from a fever. That's why I'm telling you to do something about it. You're responsible for him. Where are you? At a wedding in New York. My brother said he didn't know anything about the wedding. What? You told him? Of course I did. And by the way, you lied about him having terminal cancer. Why would you lie about that? Oh, I've had it. I'm not going back. What are you talking about? You can keep the children. You can just raise them yourself. Are you crazy? It's not easy to give birth to four kids. Your brother's blood is in them, so they're your blood. And you get them for free, so it's a good deal. I can't talk to you. I'm getting a headache. My husband would get mad at me if I went home anyway. I don't like being yelled at. Tell Henry I'm divorcing him. I'm not coming home ever again. You should talk it over as husband and wife. I don't want to. I shudder at the thought of him lecturing me. You are no better than a child. Even a little kid can say sorry when he does something wrong. You're so irritating. I'm glad to be rid of you too. Everyone is always lecturing me all high and mighty and it's getting on my nerves. Everyone in your family is so angry all the time. It doesn't matter about me, but please think about your children. There's a child here who cries mommy because she's lonely. Don't you care at all? Not at all. Then, why did you have four? 
because my husband wanted them. I didn't want kids. They're noisy, they're hard to take care of, they're messy, they spill food, and I have to take care of diapers and stuff. That's enough. It brings tears to my eyes to think that someone like you is those poor kids' mother. Oh, are you starting to love them? You'll be a good mom. I will never forget this anger. And I will never let you live a happy life. Are you an idiot? I have unloaded my heavy, big, obtrusive baggage, so how could I not be happy? What's obtrusive? It's you. Whatever you say, you can take care of the rest. Tell your brother to contact me ASAP. Huh? The bank account has been closed. Of course it's closed. If it were in your name, that would be one thing. But it's in my brother's name, isn't it? You left home without the kids. Why did you think you could just spend the money? Because we are still married! It's only on paper. You are no longer his wife or the mother of his children. Damn it! I was gonna withdraw the last of it just now! It's not that easy, is it? You're the one who put him up to this! Me? Or should I say, my mother? Your mother? My mother, she's a lawyer. When I talked to her about your behavior, she said that as the grandmother of those children, she couldn't let you off the hook, and she came all the way from her hometown to visit. She gave me a lot of advice. I didn't know Harry's mother was a lawyer. But it doesn't matter. If we get divorced, we can still divide the assets. That's right. Even a guilty spouse can claim one half. That's what I don't get. Then hurry up and send the money. Where are you now? I told you, New York. That's wrong. According to your location information, you are in Las Vegas. Did you put a GSP device on me? No, you put a location sharing app on your son's phone. Uh-oh. You're right. He's very smart at eight years old. He knows how to use the app and told me mom's in Las Vegas. This is... Oh, it's too late to delete the app now. Why not? My mom has located you and put the detective on you these last three days. And of course, my brother's been watching with us. Oh, no way! Since the house is rented, only half of the $20,000 in cash can be divided. But I understand you've already taken $10,000 out of it. It's something I have the right to spend. That's the end of the property division. My brother said this is a severance pay, so please feel free to spend it. But from our side, we are demanding $20,000 in alimony and child support for the four children. I don't think I have to ask, but are you going to be okay? What child support? Why would a woman pay it? It's the other way around, isn't it? It's supposed to be paid by the man to the woman. It's just that mothers generally take custody of the children. It's not a rule that only the father pays. It's child support, so the one who takes care of the child has the right to receive it. Really? You're so ignorant and stupid. That's rude. Is that so? I haven't said enough. I'm not paying you. I don't care. We'll go through mediation and we'll be thorough until it's notarized. If that happens, we'll be able to garnish your future income. Oh yeah? I won't work. Are you planning to live comfortably with a man to support you? I'll tell you since you've already found out. I'm with a successful real estate agent in Las Vegas. So I don't have to worry about making a living. 
I'm not like you guys who are just a poor family trying to make a big deal out of your alimony. Oh, I'm so happy for you. I'm sorry you're so unaware of what's going on, but it's about to hit rock bottom for you. What? The detective looked into the guy, too. He's not in real estate. He's just a gambler. What? I'm sure he's saying his business is doing a little poorly anyway. Well, you know, in business, there are times when things are down. Even if there were, it's natural to be suspicious of a man who relies on a woman. You didn't sense anything, did you? It is because you have no sense, or is it because you are so similar that you didn't notice? Because when you are in trouble, you help each other. That guy will be in trouble for the rest of his life. That's a lie. He gave me his business card. He wears a nice watch and a suit. He even owns a condo. Scammers lend and borrow from each other. I know it's tough to get a condo, but he just says it's his, and I'm sure he borrowed the watch and the clothes. Prove it! You can check it out for yourself. If a detective check it out, he'd have some proof. You could try following him. He's not leaving early every morning to go to work. He's just going to hit the casino first thing in the morning. He doesn't seem to be taking the long way around or trying to hide it, so you don't have to be a professional detective to follow him. It can't be true! How could you be deceived by a stupid man and throw away your precious treasure? He's really pathetic and dumb. I'm calling off the divorce! Do you think my brother would accept a piece of shit like you? I know the children want their mother. The youngest one doesn't know any better, so sure he said mama, mama, but not the older three. What? They say you get angry at them every day and are only nice to them when daddy is around. They said they don't like mommy. They? Even the youngest one doesn't call for mom anymore. He plays a lot with me and my mother and laughs a lot. My mother said she can take all four home and raise them. My brother seemed to think that's a good plan, so you are no longer needed. Who do you think you are? Who do you think gave birth to them? If all you have to do is give birth, even animals can do that. It's our duty as parents to make sure they have a smile on their faces. Don't lecture me, you single, childless woman! That's coming from a woman who didn't care about her own child who had a fever and hasn't even asked if he was alright or not. They say no news is good news. That's why I thought he was fine. I called an ambulance after that. I woke up three younger ones and spent an anxious night in a hospital waiting room in the middle of the night. Oh, really? He was on the verge of pneumonia. He was in critical condition. I feel so bad for him. It was Christmas. It's your fault. Here it comes. I wouldn't have let him get so bad. I'm going to file for compensation. You're trying to get money somehow. But it's no use. If I had to pay, I'd pay my brother. I just sent a message to my boyfriend and asked him if he was really in real estate. What did he say? I can't get in touch with him. His phone's off. The message is read. Oh, he found out, so he'll probably move on to his next prey. You should have just kept playing dumb and not checked. You screwed yourself up, didn't you? Oh, no! So, you're all alone in Las Vegas. You have no home to go back to, and you're in trouble. Lend me some money! 
You took out $10,000, didn't you? Is it gone? He said he didn't have enough to pay some business expenses, so I lent it to him. He told me to bring it to him in person because bank transfers aren't a good idea, so I came to Las Vegas. Avoiding wire transfers is obviously for tax evasion. It's only a matter of time before he gets caught, but you won't get your money back. Why not? Because there must be a lot of victims like you. If he could afford to pay them all back, he wouldn't be scamming people. What should I do then? Go to hell. Even if you suddenly decide you miss your children, you won't be allowed to see them. You are a mother after all, and one day you will want to see them. But you won't be able to. I will do everything in my power to stop you. We'll raise those four children together as a family. But you want me to pay child support? Of course. Is there such a thing? Yes, there is. You're a party to this. Help me out! I was just playing with fire! Didn't your parents always tell you playing with fire is dangerous? Shut up! You'll be cheated again by some lowlife anyway. And you'll spend the rest of your life alone and poor. If I hear that you are happy, my brother and I will quietly screw it up. I will never forgive you. If you try to force us to do anything, we'll call on an excellent lawyer who my mother knows and we'll deal with you severely. So, please don't dream of being happy. I'll watch you for the rest of my life and will never forgive you. You're being unreasonable! I hope one day you will realize just how much you screwed up. But I doubt it. You don't even have an ounce of common sense. You son of a... Well, goodbye. Wait, I want to see my children. The thought of never seeing them again makes me miss them. Disappear. Jasmine kept ignoring the lawyer's calls. She did not attend mediation, so the divorce was finalized in court. The court also decided on child support, so she won't get out of that. She gave in and is now working at a first food restaurant during the day and a street bar at night. She pays alimony and child support diligently. Even if she realizes what she lost, it's too late. Strangely enough, when she almost get a boyfriend, she said that a man leaves her in a matter of days. My brother has returned to his parents' house with his children and is working with my mother to raise them. I also return to my parents' house on weekends to watch my nieces and nephews grow up. Hey there, is this the number of Diane's husband? Uh, Tommy, is it? Are you there? Yes, hi. It's Toby. May I know who this is? Cyril, I hate beating around the bush, so I'll just say it straight up. I'm Diane's boyfriend. So yeah, nice to be acquainted with you. <laughs> Excuse me? She's my wife. So what's this about? What do you mean by nice to be acquainted with me? Come on, dude. You know what I mean. You're the one who reached out, so how about explaining everything clearly in your own words from start to finish? You don't like beating around the bush, right? Huh. <laughs> Whatever, man. I'll tell you what I want. Jeez, you're a hassle, Grandpa. You're making a big fuss. You're probably the type people dislike at work, right? <laughs> How is my work relevant to this conversation? Let's cut to the chase and continue. Ugh, I'm Diane's boyfriend. I guess from your perspective you might call it an affair. But she's totally into me now. She's my girl. 
You, on the other hand, are no longer needed. Just go ahead and get a divorce already. And then? Huh? If you want us to divorce, you must have made some preparations, right? Preparations? It would be quite ridiculous if you thought you could just blurt out that you're having an affair and demand a divorce without any thought or plan. So? I'm asking, but you sound like you haven't prepared anything. What did you say? You think I'm ridiculous? I haven't said that. I was just hypothetically discussing the possibility that you might be one if you haven't made any preparations or plans. So have you? Of course I have. That's great. Well then, I'll kick Diane out of our place right away. What? If you've made preparations, that means you've already talked to her. And you're ready to welcome her to your place, right? Um, well, can you hold on a sec? What's the matter? I'm sure you've thought of a scenario where a cheating wife gets immediately kicked out of her husband's house, right? Um, maybe. Okay, then. She's currently at work. So, as soon as she gets back, I'm gonna have her pack up and kick her out tonight. Tonight? Well, you see, I'm living with my fiancé right now. It's gonna be a real mess if she shows up out of the blue, you know? <laughs> oh my, you've been juggling two women, huh? Well, that's none of my business. Whether you're a clueless idiot or not. I'm just here to make sure she leaves as planned. Whatever happens next is up to you. As for the divorce, I'm going to discuss alimony and all that stuff through a lawyer. I'll serve her with the divorce papers once they're done. Um, wait. Okay, that's it from me. Diane, you don't need to come back home after work. Even if you do, I won't let you in. Why? Just head straight to your boyfriend's place or go back to your family. Wait, what? Boyfriend? What are you talking about? I have no idea what you're getting at. Well, a guy named Cyril messaged me. What? To be honest, I was planning to have you pack your stuff and leave on your own. But then I thought about it and I don't want you to come to my house anymore, you know? So I've arranged for movers to take your things to Cyril's place. Just let me know where you end up later. We'll need to talk about the divorce and alimony in the future, so make sure to stay in touch. Oh, and I'll have a lawyer handle all of that. I really don't want to talk to you directly anymore. Don't just assume things and steamroll ahead. You think I'm just gonna say, okay, sure, out of the blue? Seriously, don't just blindly believe everything he says. Is there evidence that I've been cheating? Yes. Huh? I've known about your affair for a while now. What? No way! I was actually in the process of gathering evidence and was planning to bring up a divorce soon. But then Cyril spilled the beans. It was such perfect timing. It's almost too good to be true. No way! For me, it just moved up the schedule by a few days, so whatever. The divorce papers will be sent to you in a few days. This is too sudden for me. If you really want to get divorced from me as soon as possible, just cooperate. Oh, God. Hey, a-hole. I'm older than you, you know. Show some respect. This isn't the time for that. Because of you, my engagement got called off. How are you planning to take responsibility for this, darn it? Oh, just to clarify, what exactly is my fault here? Because you kicked out Diane, she bumped into my fiancé at my apartment, the whole two-timing thing got exposed. Ah, what a chaotic scene to imagine. It's not my fault you were the one two-timing, right? Well, isn't that just fine and dandy? What's fine about any of this? I'm dealing with cancellation fees for the wedding venue and whatnot, and it's turning into a huge mess. But you were serious about Diane, right? Um, so you went ahead and made a declaration of romantic conquest to me, even though you know she's not the easiest girlfriend to have. That basically means you're serious about her and don't want to let her go, right? I mean, you were telling me to get a divorce, so you must have been thinking about marrying her. 
In that case, it should have been a relief to smoothly break off the engagement with the other woman. Diane will get a divorce, then once you both are free, you can be happy together. Ugh, oh, wait, that's not it. It wasn't really that serious, you know? You know you can't just break up a marriage and then claim your declaration was just a casual joke, right? Regardless of your true feelings, you're in a position where consequences are due. What's your problem, dude? Don't give me a lecture like you're all high and mighty. The fact remains that I got dumped because of you, so you should be the one to pay the $150,000 I've been asked for. Oh my, she's asking that much? That's quite a hefty sum. My fiancé is from a prestigious family. That's why we booked a renowned venue and a famous wedding planner, like the kind celebrities use. And our honeymoon was supposed to be lavish too. But now all of that got cancelled, and I'm getting billed for it. Ah, I see. Yeah, the price for fooling around with a married woman turned out to be quite steep. Don't act all nonchalant. Listen, you better pay 150000 by the end of this week. Cyril, you sound to have forgotten, but... What? You are sued for $25,000 in compensation for damaging my car in a parking lot. You were caught on surveillance camera, remember? Never mind that. $150,000 is a top priority. The 25000 is meant to offset as a compensation you owe me, resulting in a net zero payment. So it's 150000 from you. Hurry up and send me a check. Just so you know, the deadline's this week. You're well aware of what happens if you're even a little late, right? Hey, where's the check? Well, hello there. No need for greetings. Just hand over the $150,000 check already. Yesterday was the deadline, you know. I told her that you caused a one-day delay. Oh, right. As a penalty for being late, double the amount. $300,000 now. What the? Don't play dumb. It's common sense that delinquent payers get a fine. I'll pay the $150,000 as promised to my ex fiance and the other half will graciously serve as my immediate living expenses after getting fired from the company. So deliver the check, pronto. What are you talking about? Haven't you forgotten something again? What? The 25000 you've been charged is due today. It seems like it hasn't been paid yet. Huh? That's because you said you'd pay me that amount as compensation to offset it to zero. Go back and reread our chat until you get it. <laughs> you see, Cyril, have you come up with what you're demanding after consulting with experts like lawyers? Huh? Listen, there's no lawyer out there who'd listen to your crazy claims. In other words, that 150000 or 300000 you're screaming at me to pay is nothing more than a fantasy. Fantasy? What are you talking about? It makes no sense. Don't you get it? I don't have any obligation to pay you 150000 or 300000 But you, you have to pay the 25000 today. Plus, you also need to cough up the 150000 your former fiancé is demanding. But you kicked Diane out in the first place. My affair wouldn't have been exposed to my fiancé if you didn't. So it's all your fault. I'm the victim here. Regarding that matter, the thing is I found out about your affair because your former fiancé contacted me. No way. In other words, your affair was already exposed long before the day when they had that confrontation. That can't be true. She knew everything already? To tell you the truth, she and I had actually planned to bust you and Diane on the spot. You're kidding. But you had to go and expose the affair so casually just days before our plan was set to happen. So we had to change it on the fly to this mess. O.M.G. I got worried that maybe you guys would run off together, but it, it turns out you're a complete idiot. And that worked in my favor. I never expected you to try and make me pay compensation. Enough with the name calling. Oh, by the way, 
We recently found out about a third woman in the picture. Huh? It seems your former fiancé is considering an additional revenge for that. Additional? Furthermore, third woman also happens to be married. I hear he is quite outraged, so you better watch your back. Hold on a sec. How am I supposed to pay? Your former fiancé mentioned it might be around 200000 in total. 200000 Alright then, just pay me the 25000 you owe right away. Ugh, please wait. I'll be waiting for the deposit then. This isn't happening. Hi, Toby. Oh, the cheater. Is this about the alimony payment deadline today? There are about two hours left. Well, the thing is, I'm thinking of getting back together with you. Oh. Well, I'm actually heading your way right now. I see. So, what's the deal? Since we're getting back together, I guess I don't have to pay the alimony, right? Are you serious? Don't mess around. Right. So that means you can't pay the amount I demanded, right? Um, I definitely don't have the money. I mean, I've only been working part-time. You know my financial situation, right? You even depleted our joint savings with your affair. Yeah, that's true. My parents can't help me financially either. I wasn't prepared for this, so as a way of apologizing, I thought I'd get back together with you and spend the rest of my life making it up to you. I'll listen to everything you say from now on and be a faithful wife. Have you made a formal apology to the former fiancé of Cyril? Um, not yet. I'm planning to do that once we get back together. I see. Well, come over then. Okay. Toby! Hey, answer me! When I arrived at the house, I was put in a wagon car. So? They said they've arranged a job for me and I have to go there now. What's going on? Did you set me up? Cyril's former fiancé said she's helping you guys out by arranging a job. You're lucky that there's a workplace that would hire someone like you. What the heck? I didn't agree to anything. This was done with your parents' approval. Huh? I'll change the lump sum to monthly installments for you. Make sure you work hard and pay it off. What are you saying? This can't be happening. I had heard that Cyril's former fiancé was the daughter of a wealthy family. Apparently, through her connection, the CEO of a certain construction company took pity on the two idiots who couldn't make payments. Now, they're working separately on various construction sites, working hard to keep paying off their debts. The rotten attitudes are also being straightened out in the process. So far, they've managed to pay every month without any delays, so I guess they're somehow making an effort. As for me, I quit my job when I got divorced and became a freelancer. I also moved out of the old house. I decided to live in a rural area where I didn't know anyone, trying to start fresh. I've been building new relationships, attending my first home garden, and enjoying my single life positively. Is this the new number of Claire? Oh, I managed to get it through a mutual classmate. The previous number was inactive. It's been seven years since we got divorced, huh? What do you want now? I have something important to tell you. So I really wanted to get in touch. All right, make it brief. You have kids, right? Twin boys. Yeah, I do. How did you know? I saw you guys at the mall last weekend. Oh, I didn't notice. So here's the thing. How about we give our relationship another shot? Huh? Wait, why are we jumping to that topic from a chance encounter? Did you go through all the trouble of finding a new number just to bring this up? I'm serious. Those twins, they're my kids, right? What? I know, you probably found out you were pregnant after we got divorced, but you couldn't bring it up, right? You've been raising them on your own for these past seven years, haven't you? 
I'm sorry for making things tough for you all this time. From now on, I'll be there to support you, so don't worry. Hold on a second. What is it? Why do you think they are yours? Well, you did want to have my child. Now that this has come to light, I also bear responsibility. Plus, it's better for them to be raised by both parents, right? But you've remarried and you have a wife, right? I divorced her. Really? Why? I got married to a young girl because I wanted kids, but she couldn't conceive. I need a son and heir. I talked to my mom about finding another woman who could finally give me children. But if you've already had mine, that changes everything. I really don't understand what you're saying. Are you serious? Of course I am. I know it's sudden and it's confusing. My mom was overjoyed when she heard about it. We've been stressing over air issue for so long and now we have two boys to solve it. Hello? Please, don't get ahead of yourself. About what? I don't know where you were observing us from, but if I was pregnant at the time of our divorce, the child would be around seven years old now, right? That's right. My twins are only two years old. Really? First of all, I haven't seen you since the divorce. The age and physical differences between a two-year-old and a seven-year-old are pretty obvious. So why did you suddenly decide they're your kids? Then whose kids are they? They're for my current husband. Seriously? Wait, you remarried? Yeah. I mean, it's logical, right? I don't give you permission. We're divorced, so who I marry is none of your business. So where are my kids then? What about the twin heir situation? My mom is over the moon about it. You got it all wrong. So you should explain it to her yourself. And by the way, haven't you realized the possibility of your own infertility? What? Infertility is something that affects women, right? Why would a guy like me- M Male infertility is a thing you know. Really? Just do a quick Google search. Information is easily accessible. I looked it up. You've got to be kidding me. So, am I infertile? I was just talking about the possibility. But I heard you had your second wife go through a bridal check before getting married. Even then, she didn't get pregnant, so... Cut it out. I don't want to hear this. Fine, I won't say anything, but don't you think it's a good idea to get checked just in case? No, it's not necessary. Okay, then. You've got your twins over there. I don't need to have more kids. Maybe it's better to just claim they're mine and get back together. You're out of your mind. Even if your mom's not the sharpest tool in the shed, she'd figure out they're not her grandkids just by their ages. We could just say we were together when you got pregnant. That would mean I was having an affair. I'm happily married now with my wonderful husband and kids. I won't make myself miserable with ridiculous lies just to become unhappy again. Are you saying that getting back together with me would make you unhappy? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. Jeez. That better be a lie. I don't get why you can't understand this. I've been constantly harassed to have a grandson, a male heir, and to continue the family legacy. You guys called me a barren woman and kicked me out. After enduring such treatment, why would I want to go back to you? We have sons now, and that's all that matters for peace of mind. That's not the point. Anyway, just stop bothering me. I'm going to block you now. If you see me in public, don't even think about approaching me. I'll call the police if you keep this up. Wait, why can't you understand? If you just come back to me with your twins, everything will be fine. Come on, please. I don't want to make my mom sad. Hey, what the heck are you thinking? Quit slacking off and get to work. Just because you have three months to live doesn't mean you can make excuses and be lazy. What are you talking about? Um, I'm not slacking off. I'm admitted to the hospital for treatment. If you're going to die anyway, you better stay active. In your remaining time, work for me instead of spending it in the hospital for nothing. How can you say stuff like that? You were worried about my condition and being sweet until yesterday. What's gotten into you? You're being ridiculous, like getting impatient treatment. It's an aggressive stomach cancer and you're not going to make it. It doesn't mean it's hopeless. The doctor said there's a chance of recovery if the treatment works. 
Don't be so negative. I'd rather fight and survive. You're only 27, and the disease is progressing fast. Nothing's going to save you. Face reality. You really want me to be gone so badly, huh? Assuming you'll leave me a ton of money, of course. What a terrible thing to say. Nobody wants to support a lazy bum. We're married, aren't we? In sickness and in health, we vowed that at our wedding. I want to keep living together, so I'm determined to undergo treatment. I don't want to be with you anymore. <laughs> Who takes wedding performance seriously? <laughs> it sounds like you're saying you never loved me in the first place. I married you because you were climbing the ladder and thought you'd be a great cash cow. I don't have an ounce of affection for you. No way. Have you been deceiving me? Yup. I've been acting for money ever since we teamed up with your company five years ago. I was darn good at it, wasn't I? <laughs> you helped me with work-related stuff, brought me snacks when I was working late, you even consoled me when my parents passed away. That's when I fell in love with you. I danced in my head when I heard about their accident, thinking, bonus event. <laughs> There's nothing easier than taking advantage of a vulnerable woman. You bastard. Just a little gentle touch and you totally fall for it like a fool. Delusional loser. <laughs> I don't want to hear anymore. I have a terrible headache from the shock, so I'm going to sleep. Quit slacking. Go to work. You don't have time to sleep. Even if you have only three months to live, go to work and earn some money. I've already completed the admission process and I'm in my hospital room. Besides, I've already quit my job a long time ago. What? What are you doing without my permission? The painkillers barely work, and the side effects of the chemotherapy are so severe, so I switched to hospital treatment. There's no way I can work. Seriously? Is it that bad? I've told you so many times, but you didn't listen, huh? I thought you'd eventually get better until you got a terminal diagnosis. I just brushed off what you said. Fine, I'll say it again. Just walking is painful and difficult. It sounds like you might kick the bucket even sooner than three months. In that case, you better work your butt off. Huh? I splurged on you plenty before we got married as an initial investment. Don't expire before you even start paying it back. All I got was Starbucks coffee. We always split the bill on our dates, remember? Even the coffee I treated you to was worth $10,000. <laughs> Whatever. So there's not even a tiny bit of concern for me in your heart? I'm more concerned about getting back the favors I gave you than your life. And I'll tell you, it's not just about the coffee. Above all, you were supposed to be single for life. I showed you, an ugly woman, the dream of marriage. Work 24 hours to repay that favor. I told you I've quit my job, and even if I hadn't, it would be impossible. You're a web designer, you can do freelance work. Even if I could, after being told about your true intentions, there's no way I'd comply. You're truly the worst person, I can't believe it. Is that so? You'll regret it, you know. I'm considering divorce. Don't contact me anymore. Whatever. Although my life might end tomorrow or the day after, do I still have to go through with this emotional abuse? We've been married for three years. All the happy times we spent together were nothing but lies. I had spent a lot of time thinking I was going to fight hard and go back to my happy life with Jaden. Eventually, I wanted to have children. Above all, I didn't want to make him sad and promised myself to make a full recovery. What was all that for? Tears streamed down my face without realizing it as I was chatting with him. I got all fired up about divorce, but in truth, I'm so shocked and speechless. My mind is completely blank, coupled with the pain in my body. And yet Jaden pushes me further into despair. Hey, good news. I made arrangements to motivate you to work again. I told you not to contact me, right? Oh, so is it okay if something bad happens to your beloved dog? No! What did you do to Leo? I've hidden him somewhere. 
I asked your mother to take care of him. Why do you have him? When she was out shopping, I took him out with me. Bring him back right now. Nope. I'll be taking care of him from now on. What? However, if you get discharged and stop working, that is. I told you I can't. If you defy me, I'll be frustrated and take it out on the dog. <laughs> He might get sick like you from the stress. Don't you dare joke like that. I'm serious. Oh no, please. It's a dog hostage situation. If you don't obey me, his life is in danger. You're gonna be gone soon anyway, so what's the big deal? Don't be ridiculous. What you're doing is a crime. I'm reporting it to the police right away. Even if I go to jail, it's just 18 months maximum for animal cruelty in our state. After all, it's just a thing, not a big deal. <laughs> it's a precious life, a part of our family. Three of us have been living together since we got married, right? You played with him all the time. When I worked overtime, you took care of him and adored him. That was all just an act to keep you in a good mood, of course. O M G. He stinks like a beast. He drools. He's messy, and taking care of him is a pain in the butt. A real nuisance. A crappy dog. I can't believe you thought about him like that. You really can't see through acting. You're a total idiot, aren't you? <laughs> Maybe you're even dumber than the dog. Honestly, I've wanted to take that darn dog to the pound and call it a day for a long time. I won't show any mercy. Stop it! I'm the only one who knows where he is. If you report it or even talk to someone, do you know what will happen? He's been my precious family member since I adopted him seven years ago. He plays with cushions and scatters filling, and does a lot of mischief. He's a kind and gentle dog who cuddles with me when I'm down with a fever. I'm determined to get better and stay with him for a long time. So what? Don't you dare touch him. I'm telling you, it's up to you. Fine, I'll obey. Here are the conditions. Immediate discharge yourself from the hospital. Work from home and hand two thousand dollars over to me every month. If it's even a penny short, I'll take the dog to the pound immediately. Wait, doctor won't allow me to leave in my condition. It shouldn't be a problem if you tell them you want to spend your final days at home. But even if I come home and try to work, I won't be able to. It's excruciatingly painful just to be awake. I can't earn that much. Lower the amount a bit. Hmm. So you're already deciding you can't do it before even trying, and you're willing to abandon our precious dog? No. I'll do my best, but I'm just telling you there are limits. Even when I was in good health, earning two thousand dollars a month wasn't easy. Oh boy, an innocent life's going to suffer because of you. It's a pity. Okay, I'll do it. I'll make that much, please. Just promise not to harm Leo. You should have just said that from the beginning. You annoyed me with all your excuses. I'm increasing it to two thousand five hundred dollars per month. No way. What? You got a problem with that? No, I don't. So please take good care of Leo. You're also banned from leaving the house, and no external communication for anything other than work. Okay. I won't confiscate your phone, but I'll install monitoring software later. If you do anything unnecessary before that, I don't even know where Leo is, so I won't defy you. That's smart. Oh, and don't forget to let my mom know that I'll be taking care of the dog from now on. Got it. But can you please send his photo once a week? I want to be sure he's okay. Ugh, that's such a hassle. Please, if I don't know he's okay, I'll be worried sick and won't be able to work. Well, if it boosts your motivation, I guess I will. I'll give you that much. Thank you. Good. Get to work quickly. Make a contribution to me as a wife during your miserable remaining days. I lost a grand playing card. I'm raising this month's payment to three thousand five hundred. You have no complaints, right? You're ignoring my messages, huh? Do you even care what happens to your dog? Ugh! 
This is infuriating. I'm so pissed. I'm taking him to the pound right now. I'll take a photo of him being locked up in a kennel and send it to you. My daughter was rushed to the emergency room just now. Daughter? Who's this? Guess. Ah, oh, I see. You're playing, huh? Trying to run away because you can't come up with the money, right? Not at all. Stop the lame attempts. Dog's life is on the line. So you've been threatening Sandra like this all along. What do you think of her and Leo's lives? Are you gonna keep going? I'm dead serious about the dog. Yeah, I'm coming for you, you good-for-nothing boy. What the? Cut it out or I'll report you to the police, you idiot. Do you get it now? Well, I understood the first time, but why are you writing in my mom's native tongue? Sandra? There's only one reason, you moronic son. Is it you, mom? You finally figured it out, huh? Your brain works slower than sloth's limbs. Why are you messaging me on Sandra's phone? Right before she collapsed, she mustered her last strength and entrusted me with it. So, the emergency's for real? Then why hasn't the hospital contacted me? Apparently, she had scribbled my number on a piece of paper and was clutching it in her hand. The hospital called me and I rushed over. I wondered why it was me, but seeing the chat history, it all made sense. That jerk. The note also said, my phone to mother-in-law. A nurse kept it and gave it to me. What a sneaky trick. You've done worse, low life. What the? Reading the text between you guys, I thought I was going to have a heart attack from how horrible it was. No wonder she chose me over you for the emergency contact. If you showed up, it would have made things even worse. How dare you push her to this point, you heartless monster. You're making a big fuss for a little marital spout. After all the threats and torment you put her through, you've got some nerve to say that. It's just a chat on what's up, right? You're talking like you've seen real life, but you haven't seen anything. I don't need to see anything. She worked tirelessly as per your orders, even sacrificing her sleep. That's why she collapsed. I can't believe you made her, who's been given three months to live, work so hard without even allowing her to get treatment. It's inhumane. Wow, you're being pretty harsh toward your own son. That's all just your speculation. Would you acknowledge it if I showed you evidence? Don't get all worked up when there's no such thing. Did you forget that I have the spare key to your house? Huh? Right after seeing the chat, I went there and checked her room. What the heck are you doing? I'll report you for trespassing. You're the one who'll get reported, Jaden. She was secretly keeping a diary. There were details of horrific treatments she received from you. Oh, man. He took away my medicine. If I sleep for more than two hours a day, he won't give me painkillers. Even if I have a fever and can't move, I'm not even allowed to drink water unless I do the chores. My whole body feels like it's constantly stabbed by needles. When I'm barely conscious, I wake up in agony after being shaken by him. Just reading it made me feel so much pain, and tears welled up. God darn it! I was preparing to take this evidence to the police when I received your message. Ugh! If only I had monitored her more closely. In the beginning, you quit your job and watched her constantly, right? But once you were convinced that she wouldn't escape, you left her alone. And you spent all your time at the casino, isn't that right? She even had those details in her diary? She really is a snake, nitpicking on everything. Weren't you nitpicking too? Whenever you got home, you'd check the amount of painkillers and groceries. So even when you weren't there, she could only have water according to what she wrote. I have more than enough evidence to convict you. Try turning me into the police. Who knows what happens to the dog? You used to dote on him too, didn't you? If you keep making trouble, I'll throw him away in an undisclosed location. I really can't stand listening to you anymore. You're still saying these awful things even when I know the truth. I'm gonna squeeze every penny out of her until the last second of her life. And when she's gone, I'll take all of her money and live the good life forever. That's awful. 
I won't spare anyone who gets in my way, even if it's my own mother. You've been obsessing with money and valuing it all your life, but I never thought you'd have such a twisted mind. Money rules the world. With it, you can get anything. I hoped to raise you to be humble and modest. That's why I sent you to good Catholic schools. Where did I go wrong in raising you? I'll take responsibility too for my parenting failure and the pain it caused Sandra. So Jaden, let's stop this now and repent. What are you talking about? I didn't ask to be born, but you had me on your own. I won't be swayed by your sob story. If you want to protect the dog, then forget about everything you read. I've already made up my mind. So that means you'll follow my lead? From now on, you're not my son. I'll have no mercy. What? All the photos of Leo that you sent to Sandra every day, those were taken at the cottage Dad gifted you, right? Um, no, it's not related to that place at all. Yes, I'm sure of it. Sandra probably didn't notice, but there was a doodle of a flower you made on the wall in one of the photos. So what? Even if you try to rescue him now, I'll get there faster than you. He's already been rescued. What? I'm not as dumb as you. I don't blabber on without a plan. Leo is safe and sound at my place. You're lying. It takes a five-hour drive from your place to there. You can't just easily get there. It's even farther from the hospital. Sandra collapsed in the middle of the night yesterday. Oh. Based on her diary, it was clear that you were out all day gambling. So I investigated the house and dad went to save Leo. You mentioned her being taken to the hospital just a little while ago. I thought it was like an hour or two ago. As you get older, an hour or 12 hours feels like just a moment ago. I'm sorry, I can't keep up with the sensibilities of young people. You did it on purpose, didn't you? If you had come home by morning, you would have noticed she wasn't there. Instead, you've kept your seriously sick wife confined at home and exploited her while you've been out having fun every day. It's beyond belief. Who would want to go back to a house with such a gloomy old woman in it? When I saw her in the hospital, she looked like a completely different person. So thin and it brought tears to my eyes. But you... Normally a mother would stand by her son. Why do you care about her so much? Since she married you, she has been as important to me as you are. Ugh, whatever. Well, if you're serious about going to the police, I'll just escape abroad or something. You guys can't chase me all the way, right? <laughs> you don't know when to give up, huh? I still have some savings, and once I get her life insurance, I can travel the world and live it up. Haha. <laughs> you still think you can get it, even after all the truths come out? Are you missing the brain in your head? Now that she's almost gone, I, her husband, naturally deserve it. Phew, it came sooner than I expected. What a relief. <laughs> Who's almost gone? Huh? Don't you dare assume such an awful thing, you moron. Is it Sandra? No, it's just your acting, right, Mom? I won't be fooled anymore, haha. <laughs> if things were going to turn out like this, I should have rejected you when you proposed under the cloudy sky saying, The moon looks beautiful. It's the real deal, huh? Mom says something about your last strength, so I thought... I thought I was done for two, but then my deceased parents appeared in my dream. They screamed at me while clenching their fists above their heads. You can make it. You can still overcome this. You need to keep living. They were so loud that my ears hurt even across the rainbow bridge. What the heck? Thanks to them, I woke up thinking, how overbearing. Are you serious? Aren't things supposed to be more emotionally touching? My parents were like that. No matter how tough things got, they lived cheerfully, always turning it into a joke. I used to be like that too. But with the illness and dealing with you, I've become a completely weak person. Thanks to them, I've snapped out of it. Ugh. I'd believe that maybe I'd just keep getting bossed around by you until the end. But my parents and in-laws helped me in my dream in reality. With a wonderful family of four people and one dog, there's no way I'm going to let myself be beaten by illness and a jerk of a husband you sound to have suddenly gotten all lively we're getting a divorce 
be prepared for a reimbursement of the living expenses you squandered. And I'll be sure to collect for all the abuse I've suffered. Brace yourself. You think I'm going to agree to that? In your dream, I'll disappear immediately. Oh, but before that, there might be an arrest for the daily verbal and physical abuse against me. It's a good thing I got into the habit of keeping a diary and photo evidence. Now that I think about it, it all started when I imitated my mom as a child. Come on, listen, I'm going to escape overseas. I'm already on my way to the airport. If you want to escape, go ahead. But you know... What now? If the law can't touch you, I'll chase you down no matter where and make sure to roast you alive. That's what your mom says. Do you really think I'm going to be scared by her? <laughs> She's holding a lighter, looking like a Saturn. It's a pretty convincing threat. Jeez. Are you really not scared? Well, if she spotted even one cockroach, she'd never give up until she'd taken it down. But no way. I doubt that she's going to chase me all the way overseas. She couldn't possibly. No way. I'll be fine. All your inner turmoil is written out here, you know. You're clearly freaking out. <laughs> Shut up. There's no way I'm losing to her. I'm going to live it up for the rest of my life. Living abroad, gallivanting around, with the insurance money from my crappy wife. Since I'm still alive, you won't get a single penny. Oh. You've been squandering your money away at the casino. I doubt there's that much left in your savings. Have you checked your balance? I just looked at my account on my phone and there wasn't even $1,000 left. How would you live it up with just that? You'd burn through that on plane tickets and accommodation, wouldn't you? All right, I've made up my mind. What? Realize that running away is impossible and now you're thinking of saying, sorry, let's start over? Well, if you do, I'll double the alimony. So forget about any sweet ideas of apologizing and getting forgiven at this point. Don't get ahead of what I want to say. I'm done here. I'll leave everything to your mom from now on. Goodbye. Sandra, wait! Now, you reflect on everything you've done while waiting. My former, useless son. Mom, I'm still your son no matter what. And stop talking to me like I'm some kind of criminal. You're not caught yet, but you're destined to end up behind bars. In my family, there's only my husband, our daughter Sandra, and our dog, Leo. You're just a cockroach in our house. That's harsh, treating me like a pest. I'll thoroughly exterminate you, and ensure you never see the light of day again. If you think you can escape, give it a try. I'll chase you to the ends of hell. It's my responsibility because I brought you into this world. Both you and Sandra are really worked up. Let's calm down and talk. It's better for all parties that way, isn't it? No discussions. Prepare yourself. Oh god, I'm definitely getting the heck out of here. Beagles have various uses for their sense of smell. Afterward, he received a good scolding from my mother-in-law and was taken to the police. He was arrested for domestic violence and sentenced to prison due to the severity of the charges. We divorced while he was in prison. I filed various claims totaling around $100,000, including alimony. As for what happened to him afterward, I asked my ex-mother-in-law and she told me. Through an old acquaintance's connections, I sent him to a developing country. He works almost every day without much rest, and his entire salary is used for alimony payments. He may be surviving on the meager food. It's a consequence of his own actions. I'm impressed by her thoroughness. As for me, surprisingly, I'm recovering from my illness. My attending physician even called it a miracle. I'll continue to focus on my treatment and make the most of the remaining life that's given by my four parents. You trashy bitch. I will never approve of you marry Mark. Despite being a low-class high school dropout, you act like you're something. I won't let a woman like you, who has no worth in life, become my son's wife. What? Mom? I don't remember allowing you to call me like that. Are you really Mark's mom? Maybe it's not you. You sound like a different person who I met earlier. I am Mark's mother. Yes! 
I can't believe it. You were so nice to me earlier. Calling me trashy and low class is terrible. Besides, you were happy about our marriage, weren't you? To be honest, I was thinking about completely ruining the wedding greeting. I was just trying to be nice to my son. My husband agreed with the marriage, so I had no choice but to go along with him. But I won't let you marry Mark. So Mark's dad is happy with this marriage. I'm glad. That dumb bald guy has zero sense to judge people. I will make my son realize. I was so happy that both of you accepted me. I'm shocked that it was a lie. We promised that we'd cook together next time. I know a high school dropout can make decent food. I'd rather do it with a monkey. The monkey can make a better dish than you. Why do you hate me so much? Because you are a high school dropout. I told you. I wasn't able to finish high school because of my family problems. Your father died and your mother was sick? To make ends meet and pay for your sister's tuition? That's a cheap sub story. Who's going to fall for that? <laughs> you don't have to say it like that. Haven't you learned that liars are the beginning of thieves? It's a true story. Mark's dad told me it doesn't matter whether I'm a high school dropout. Of course, it matters. A person's worth is determined by education. A high school dropout has no common sense. A woman born from trashy parents don't have any discipline. It is what it is. Being a scum is inherited naturally. That's terrible. I bet that's how you tricked my son. Using that fake story. No, I didn't. So, is it seduction? Not just intelligence, but also you have a low class of moral values. That's not possible. Please don't insult me with assumptions. Deceiving a pure hearted person like Mark is a piece of cake for you, isn't it? Trying to manipulate and use him. I can't let you get away with it. Please, listen to me for a moment. Whose child is that in your belly, really? There are things you should and shouldn't say, no matter what. You're getting angry because it hit a nerve, right? <laughs> See? You can control your anger because you are a low-class woman. I behave myself during the wedding greeting because I'm a decent person. Be grateful for my kindness, which I'm only telling you through text. How can I be grateful after such an insult? This child is Mark's child. It's a precious existence that we created through our love. Even if you're his mom, I won't tolerate you mocking us. Oh my god, a high school dropout is so scary, so quick to anger and has no manners. I'm going to stop texting you. It's making me feel sick from the stress. This isn't good for the baby. You should just get rid of such a disgusting living thing. Are you serious? I'll say it as many times as you want. Give up and disappear with that dirty child. A child born to a high school dropout won't lead a good life in this world. So, you should just get rid of it. Unbelievable. I can't tolerate this. I will have a talk with Mark. It's pointless. Mark is on my side. Is that so? He understands me the best. When he sees this text, he will sure be on my side. How many years do you think I've been watching my son? He will listen to his mom and you're done with him. If our relationship can be damaged so easily, then we will get married. However, it's easy to cut ties. I look forward to seeing you cry and scream. You have a terrible personality. Born losers should stay silent. Anyway, we're getting married. We don't need parents' permission nowadays. If you think you won't if you registered as a married couple? I wonder, since I've seen your true colors, and there may be no other way. 
We'll just cut ties with awful mother and we'll live happily as a couple. I hope it works out that way. <laughs> What do you mean? I don't know. Well, good luck. I can't believe she was that kind of person. It's the worst. Oh, excuse me. My name is Monica. I'm a 20 years old pregnant woman about to get married. My mother-in-law's true color was discovered at this time. I was worried about my future, so I talked to Mark about it. Mark was furious and immediately confronted her. But she insisted that she didn't know. On top of that, she deleted our conversation. Well, I had taken a screenshot on my part, so Mark could see all the conversations. As we talked it over, we decided to go ahead and register it as a married couple first. I'm a little concerned about mom's reaction. However, mom turned out to be a much scarier person than I had expected. Have you already registered? How did you know? Mark told me you were gonna file it today, but I didn't approve of it. Are you trying to start a war or something? I see. Seriously? You're such a snitch. I've had to listen to him complain the whole time. Well, he was pretty upset. I told you that I would tell him about it. Mark said he'd have my back. That boy's just going through a rebellious phase. He's sulking a bit. Quite optimist, huh? Our anger isn't like that at all. Yeah, yeah. That's why you're there to beat us to the punch and get married first, right? Hurry up and get it done already. What are you up to? It's kind of creepy. Aw, oh, come on. You haven't done it yet? They just called me. I'm heading there now. How oh, they accept it? <laughs> Can't wait to see your reaction. <laughs> What did you do? Huh? They rejected it. They told me Mark's already married. Oh dear, really? You can't get married to him at all, huh? Too bad. <laughs> this is outrageous. You had something to do with this, right? What did you do? Don't go making false accusations. I didn't do a thing. I can't think of anyone else but you. You must have done something. You made up the marriage certificate and filed it before we could, didn't you? Do you have any proof? Making up official documents isn't as easy as it sounds, you know? Basically, Mark submitted it willingly. Mark finally realized he'd been fooled by you. He woke up and he married someone better. That's all. I refuse to believe that. Mark has always cared about me. We've been living together already. Maybe he's just keeping you around like a sidekick. <laughs> don't be ridiculous. Shut up. Why don't you ask himself? I've been trying to call him, but he didn't pick up. Of course he's not answering, right? He's with a woman more important than you. Let me share some good news. Mark is at a luxury hotel right now with his young, beautiful, rich, loving wife. Cut it off. Such a made-up story. Then, why isn't he answering your calls? He always keep his phone close. Has there ever been a time when you couldn't reach him? No. But I can't believe something like this. There must be a reason for it. Stop entertaining those silly thoughts. He's probably busy making love right now. Too busy with his cute young wife to pick up the phone. Stop. I don't think Mark would do this to me. Wait. What? No way. What? Never mind. All right. I'm done with this conversation. I've got no more business with you. Fine. You're at the government building stairs, right? How did you know? I'm right behind you. Don't be silly. Oh, it's true. I can see your pathetic backside, you know? I told you to go away with the child, didn't I? What? Bye. 
Don't haunt me, okay? <laughs> I can't believe you stepped down the stairs! Even the baby passed away! Poor thing! I guess your fantasy of Mary Mark went too far! You must have been hallucinating and couldn't see reality! Poor lady! Please watch over Mark and his wife from heaven! I pray for your soul to rest in peace! Excuse me? I'm still alive! What? You pushed me and then called the police, pretending to be the one who found me. How could you come up with such a thing? Even if I thought of it, I wouldn't do it. Why? You erased the conversation and even sent a text saying RIP? But I'm sorry, me and my baby are safe. Why are you still alive? I thought both of you went to heaven. I'm still covered in scars here and there though. I fell off my back as quick as I could. So thank god, the baby's okay. Not good. The hospital said they did everything they could, but they couldn't help you. How can a doctor lie to me? I don't want any more harm from you. I told the hospital what happened and they cooperated. What are you talking about? You fell down the stairs on your own. You were upset because your fiancé left you. That's the situation you wanted, wasn't it? You wanted to come up with some reason to claim it was just an accident. Really, you've come up with a crazy idea, didn't you? Oh, do you have any evidence? Do you know what a voice memo on a phone is? What's that? It's like a simple voice recorder. No way! I was in a daze when I was pushed down, but I could hear you laughing at me. I recorded it as soon as I could. Besides, if I ask the stuff, I will be able to find a stuff who heard you laugh. You are annoying. You really are a sassy little bitch. You are still talking like that? Even though I have proof? I will just have to pay a fine for it. My rich daughter-in-law will pay for it. Your daughter-in-law is me, but I won't pay. It's so funny! <laughs> Did you hit your head and become delusional? Maybe you should fall down again. What's a loser who got dumped by Mark saying? I wasn't dumped. It was all you. I can forgive you for involving and hurting so many people. You're being too paranoid. We already know everything. You wanted to make Mark's wife, Annika Roberts. Who? Cool. Oh, you know her so well, don't you? I have no idea what you're talking about. How could you come up with these lies? Then, I will tell you. You were after a rich woman to be your son's wife. That's where you caught your eye, Annika. Don't be silly. She's just a daughter of my friend. Will you stop being delusional? Recently, her father's company became the talk of the town. He's quickly risen to the upper class, hasn't he? Annika had someone she loved, but her parents were against their marriage. I don't know. You happened to see her and her fiancé talking in a restaurant. You were listening to their conversation. You knew that she was pregnant, right? I told you, I didn't know. They were so distressed that they even considered eloping, especially Annika who was pregnant. I guess people under pressure are easily fooled. Wow, I didn't know that. I'm your parent's childhood friend and former lawyer. Let me help you persuade your family. I'm sure you'll be happy with your fiancé. Leave it to me. If you say something like this to Annika, who's in mental shambles, she'll listen to you. It was easy to gain her trust, right? You're good at talking. I don't know what you're talking about. You told her that you would deliver the paper to her and you made her write them for you. Once you make her believe you, it doesn't matter how you explain your unnatural behavior. It doesn't matter. Would you stop saying things that doesn't make any sense? She wrote thinking she could be with the one she loves. You took care of it and you wrote Mark's name and submitted. Now you made a fake married couple as you planned. How dare you come up with such a terrible thing that destroys people's feelings? 
I'm impressed when your fantasies go that far. Why don't you become a novelist? In fact, when I tried to register our marriage, somehow he was already married. He just dumped at you and switched to Annika, right? Stop it already. I want to stop too, but it still continues. When Annika realized that she was cheated, you didn't apologize to her, but urged her to become your son's wife. He also told the fiancé that Annika had been cheating on him for a long time and married another man. Don't involve me in your delusions just because you want to turn away from reality. Would you put yourself in the position of having to listen to your crazy fantasies forever? I'm not delusional. Annika told me everything. What? She overheard you and Mark's phone call and found out about me. She realized that I, a pregnant woman like her, was being targeted. She tried to let me know somehow, but she doesn't know my face or name. That's right. There's nothing she can do. Unless she's psychic, there's no way she could have told you. A psychic? You must be more delusional than me. What Annika took is a more down-to-earth way. She went to a government office to ask for help. She asked that when a woman named Mark White Wife came, they should give a letter to that woman. Shortly before I was pushed down by you, the staff secretly gave it to me. She did that? Why don't you just admit it? Oh, shut up. Then what? That's right. I did it. You're a high school dropout and a law class woman. You don't deserve my son. A child born from a high school dropout is such a waste of society. It's a good thing to get rid of them before they are born. So that's how you really feel about my baby? Yes, because I'm done pretending to be nice to you. You're too late to realize that, aren't you? They're just a man and woman after all. That's a low-class idea. Well, they haven't come back from the hotel yet. If it's Mark, he's already in my hospital room. What? Annika's number was written on the letter, so I got in touch with her. When I told her that I was pushed down by you, she came running to the hospital room, and the nurse got mad at her. What? That snitch! I heard it in the hospital room. You called her to come to a hotel today, and you told Mark that she asked him to stay with her. You just set up both of them to go to a hotel room. When I called her, Mark rushed over from the hotel. But he didn't answer your call. Who knows? They might have been doing something in a romantic hotel room at the time you called him. Well, really? Do you still keep doing that? How can you be so sure? Whatever the reason, when a man and a woman are in a hotel, and there's only one thing to do. Then, there's no problem. Annika and her fiancé are in the hotel right now. Huh? She called him and explained the situation, and the misunderstanding was cleared up. And it's no wonder she didn't answer the phone. You're the one who took the phone out of Mark's bag. I heard that from Mark himself. So, I'm not delusional or making false accusations. That's the worst. Still, it's a messy and violent plan. It would have been better if a monkey had thought of it. Do you have any more excuses? I'm ready to break it down for you. Shut up! Shut your mouth now! And apologize to me! Oh, it's rude to compare a monkey with such a dumb person like you. I'm so sorry. You are apologizing about that? Yeah, what else? It's your fault for introducing yourself with a baby in your belly. I had no choice but to do this. If I had passed away, so the fake couple with the broken heart will become a real couple? That's right. If only you'd disappear, we'd have managed. Because you're so stubborn. You have the life force of a cockroach. You really want your son to marry a rich woman, huh? What about Mark's feelings? I don't care. A son must make his mother happy, right? It's Mark's responsibility to marry a rich woman and give me a good life. 
otherwise, I wouldn't know why I gave birth to him. I can't believe you are a mother. I will never be like you. You're too cocky for your own good. You put my baby in danger because of your stupid desires. You're overreacting. But she's safe and you should be happy with the outcome. When I was pushed down, I couldn't feel my baby's movement. The baby didn't kick me like always do. I was so scared that I almost lost control. I couldn't stop crying and I was so anxious. Do you know what that feels like? I will never forgive you. So what? What the hell are you being emotional about? You look so stupid. I want to make you feel the same way, but I can't do that to a terrible person like you who has no love. I will have you punished legally. Please be prepared. What are you talking about? Issuing a forged marriage certificate without permission is a crime of forgery of a private document. Pushing me from the stairs is a crime of assault. Threatening me is also a crime. So, are you going to report it to the police? My husband and son won't allow it. They are on my side. What? You're too naive to think your family will cover for you. Mark is furious and he wants to cut off ties with you. And your husband, he wants to get a divorce. No one will help you. Divorce? I'm in trouble! My ADM! Money again. That's all you care about. You really are a despicable person. You really don't have a love for your family. If I didn't have money, I wouldn't be able to go to a casino. What about my date plan with my sugar baby? If I don't help him, my sugar baby will be in trouble. I don't care. You've spent your husband's money for years. And you're too greedy to make money off using your son too. You only live once. What's wrong with being greedy? Don't say it like it's a cult. In your case, it's just selfishness. Oh, I get it. I will allow you to get married. I don't want a divorce or an arrest. I want to live free on other people's money. It's all your fault. And I don't need your permission to get married. The marriage certificate was found to be forged. And we are already married. Then, even more so. You don't want your mother-in-law to suffer like this. By all means. Don't say that. You're the one who has no love for your family. I don't consider you family anymore. Annika's going to file a report too. No way. Wait. Someone's here. Someone came to pick you up, huh? I don't want to. Hey, forgive me. Convince them. I will never forgive you. You will be in a private room, surrounded by cops, interrogating. Maybe there's a handsome cop that you will like. Why don't you flirt with them or something? You've got to be kidding! Take care, scumbag lady. Goodbye forever. I don't like this! When the cop showed up, she became violent to the police. Now, she additionally charged for obstruction of justice. So, she ended up behind bars on multiple counts. Her actions were so malicious that she got quite the sentence. During the endless questioning, Dad is finally able to divorce her. Mark also cut off ties with her, and Mom, well, Karen, was left all alone. I also hired a lawyer to file for alimony. I have a feeling she still have to pay me even after she's out of prison. Well, I think karma has been served. I can help but chuckle thinking about her miserable life. Meanwhile, Annika and her fiancé put in the effort to convince their parents. They managed to convince their parents in the end, and they finally tied the knot. A few months later, I welcome a healthy baby girl into the world. She's perfectly healthy even after that accident. I just can't stop adoring her. Mark and Dad are on cloud night too. A few months after that, Annika also had a baby. And today, these adorable little angels, they're playing together like sisters. Thank you for watching. Please rate the video and subscribe to our channel. See you in the next video.